Thank you very much. Welcome. Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much, especially to Brother Rubis Young for that size and yet unwell packed or rather well unpacked story about what patients ought to be. Yeah, and, and I hope that helps for all of your VIPs to figure out, okay, there's quite a lot to be done. So that is why we have to work in a team. Yeah, that's why you have to work in a team. You need to actually understand, okay, how do I make this doable? I have an idea. Who do I talk to to make this doable? Who do I talk to to actually, for example, test the validity of my idea? Yes, usable. Who do I, where do I go to actually make sure the idea can be used? That's why, for example, Mosti has established the uh, various sandbox. If the idea VIPs have actually heard of that, great. But if you haven't looked it up, yeah, sandbox, what does it mean? Okay. Why, why is there sand? What's up with the passive? What's the idea? <laughs> yeah, but it's actually based on a, on a more Western idea where kids, when they grow, when they're young, they're taken a play area outside where there's usually sand. And you can use the sand to create, you know, just like at the beach, you can create castles, you can create sculptures using sand the same idea so you can try you can test all sorts of things so that's one reason why mosti set up the sandbox and then you talk about marketable how do you get the idea out will people want to hear this this particular idea and bankable yeah and that's sustainable so all these yeah you should take a look at and understand when you intend to roll out not just innovations actually even even ideas that you actually get from somewhere else yeah but doable too would not be so important lah, since somebody else has made it just put it online sell it on we're not saying that's wrong we're saying that's also one particular here but for the future of our country we need you to drive the roll out of novel ideas. We need you to drive innovations. Innovasi, bukan innovasi. Yeah? We need you there. And it's not just coming up with the ideas. And that's what I would like to actually take you through for the next half. So allow me to follow through the slides I had earlier. And hopefully you can actually see this new presentation. Can you, can everybody see this? What is it, Mr. Yong? The Innovation Value Chain Interface. So, for those of you, yeah, in future webinars, we will unpack these various phases further. But the DUMF's model that Mr. Robert Yong mentioned just now, they are mapped to many of these phases. They are mapped to these phases. These phases, for example, problem identification. It answers the question that Mr. Yong mentioned just now. Hey, is it tackling a pain or an itch? Pain or an itch? Is it a real big problem or it's just, ala, takpala, if you don't tackle this problem, it's okay, we got other ways of tackling it. Because that's very, that's related to the new MBS. Very related. Yeah, the problem identification. Then idea generation, where you generate ideas sandbox yeah coming up with doable ideas and if you're really doing proper innovation you will find out hey, actually uh, from 10 ideas maybe two ideas are doable the rest is either it hey, cannot do we we'll have the resources or we need to get more resources or hey, technology is not ready yet okay what can we do within the resource that we have or it could be hey we can do this, but we don't have enough money. Where you go to idea championing, you need to go out to actually convince investors, venture capitalists, people with money, other people's money. Hey, this is a good idea. What you have right now, what we have right now, super, cantik, beautiful. But guess what? Our ideas are better. I mean, look at the example that uh, Mr. Yong mentioned just now. Grab, right? came from Gambut. We, we don't have to really talk about, okay, what happened? Why did it go down to Negara Singa Singa? But that is in itself is another topic, another discussion by itself. But for other idea championing as well. But the reality is, can. Can. Do, we, do it properly, we can. It takes a lot of effort. It is tiring. Especially if you have to, to do it within two months. 
I would not recommend it to anybody. Yeah, but if you have to, you have to. You have to get those novel ideas out there to tackle a real pain, a real pain, a real issue out there. And then to implement the ideas. This is where you need people who know how to manage innovative project management. Some of you, yeah, especially those of you in final year, you will probably get the opportunity to learn project management, either in your university as, a, as an elective. I mean, if some of you who are here, if, if you get that chance, can you just type, do you get the chance to learn project management in your electives? Is it a yes or a no? If it's a yes, type yes. No? It's a no, type no. Or those of you watching on YouTube, right? if, you, if you've actually had experience doing project management, maybe you can actually tell us, yeah, project management, is it is relevant to innovation? Yes or no? Maybe you can type in the YouTube box. Like so we have some sort of... The top point I'm trying to make here with this particular slide is that it is not so straightforward. You have to manage the money and the championing. You have to manage technology, you know, the technology audit and readiness up here, because this tells you the doable element, technology audit and readiness and match it to problem identification. Human resource, you need to know the people that you have. Is it doable? With the people that we have do we need more people okay we will unpack this in future seminar webinars so don't miss any of the six series huh? today is number one we have five more don't miss them because all this will really help you make sense of what you learn in university yeah we are here to supplement to strengthen what you learn in university we are not here to confuse you further we are here to actually strengthen what you pick up in university yeah? if i may digress slightly for now Zai. Um, a lot of people around this are questioning, hey, should we still go to university? Should I send my kids to university? They miss out why universities. Universities are important to give the co call it cognitive knowledge, the understand the field. If they go into journalism, if they go into engineering, if they go into finance, they need somewhere to learn what matters in those particular fields. Yes, they need that cognitive knowledge. Without that cognitive knowledge, we can't do. It's very difficult to do innovation, not just innovation, even the innovasi one is difficult. So you need the cognitive knowledge from universities. But we need add-on ability to look at, okay, this is the knowledge I have. Which part of the knowledge matters for this innovation to make it happen? And that that ability to contextualize, that is what we actually do here in practice. That this kind of skill set will help you get those high value jobs. I mean, we have a lot of low value jobs. It's good, it helps the country, yes. But we, as the as the song goes, chukup, chukup. Let's let's let that industry go, let that industry run. We you, VIPs, we will power the high value web industries where we create instructions. And don't be scared. Don't be scared. We know that a lot of graduates, they are fresh graduates. For your information, my company has been training Invest Lango, Invest KL students, and inshallah, in, in, in a couple of months, we'll be training Pera and Sarawak students. We have had that experience, reskilling graduates into high value jobs. Talk about ability. Innovate, take those instructions. They'll tell people, this is how you use the polyclonic uh, stem. Can, can. Yeah. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Even if you are, you know, if you haven't worked before, don't be scared. As a matter of fact, sometimes with not having industry experience can be an advantage. But again, that's for a separate webinar. Yeah. Now, what I want to highlight again on this because slide, two things. Eh? One. Take a look at the red arrows. Red arrows show interface between one phase to another. For those of you, for example, who do engineering, you know, hey, if I design part A, I must, and I design part B, and part A must be connected to part B, you know you have to design the interface. How part A connects to part B. If there are stresses, if there are loads, you have to design so that the load doesn't destroy the parts. Yeah, you have to design so that the parts can take the load. They don't break up. I mean, imagine cars. If those of you who are doing mechanical engineering, 
when you do your calculations for engines, you will see, hey, actually, uh, our cars, they are designed to really take up a lot of load. It's not that easy. It's not that straightforward. But we can do it. When we talk about those of you perhaps doing even higher level engineering, aerospace engineering, I, I'm from the aerospace industry. It's even more amazing. It's amazing how much knowledge that those of you who are religious, you know, how much knowledge that God has given us that we can make use of. And imagine that's just a drop. Just a drop. Imagine what we can do if we properly follow the innovation value chain, the definition, and what are the criteria? The DUMBS criteria really helps you focus. So don't forget. Brother Robes, one of these days, you have to trademark lah, the DUMBS model if you haven't. Seriously, I seriously suggest. Oh, trademark already. Lah. We'll have a chat afterwards. Yeah? So that's the first thing. Second thing, if you take a look here, yeah? VIPs, take a look. Design thinking. Right? If you read today, a lot of training courses, a lot of universities, a lot of companies talking about design thinking. Oh, design thinking is important. Now, just to make you understand, design thinking falls here yeah, in the innovation value chain. It helps you identify problems. It helps you generate. Yes. So design thinking falls here. It's very important. But it doesn't take you all the way. So understand that. Another one, RDCI. This is the innovation model that Malaysia has previously adopted. Research, development, commercialization. Now, I think from what you've heard from myself and Mr. Robes Yong, research, development, commercialization are all parts of innovation. You want to get competitive edge, you want people to be able, you want you to get high value jobs, you need to actually start rolling out novel ideas, innovations. And you must understand that RDC are parts of I. They are not separate, yeah? They are not separate. Now, talking back, let's, let's, give, let's have an exercise. I'm going to skip over this. I'm going to skip over this and ask the, this question. Okay. You can see some pictures here. At the top is the combat. Sorry, top left. Top right is the proton iris. Bottom right is a light warp steel grating. This is from another uh, innovator in Malaysia. I think Mr. Robes Yong knows him as well, Mr. Uh, Dr. Bakstan. And this one here on the bottom left is something that looks... I'm not going to give you... I'm not going to, not going to actually mention, going to mention what this is off the cuff. We're going to have a simple exercise. So here, ladies and gentlemen, a question. Is the proton iris an innovation or not? Type your answers in the box. In the chat box. Okay, 30 years. Type your answer in the box. So those are saying, no, 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 this is no. There are those saying, yes. Oh, wow. It's not, it's not. Blah, 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 blah. What about YouTube? YouTube, anybody say anything? Anybody responding? Guys? Okay, we have responses here. Okay, there we go. No, many saying no. Okay. Don't know whether I can I cannot actually go into the YouTube channel right now. But if, if somebody is going over the YouTube channel, maybe you can actually add saying, yeah, there are people who are saying yes, people saying no. But here, generally, yeah. More people say no than people saying yes. So which one is it? Now, this is where the legal aspect comes in as well. Legal aspect. We have not spoken about legal, eh? but it falls under the doable element. Because the legal element can tell you, okay, can do this, but you might get sued for it. <laughs> yes, we can do it, but you're going to get wet. Yeah, somebody will rotate you. So... This is where we need to understand what is the automotive industry like. And in the automotive industry, design elements, novel aspect in the design element are considered to be novelty. Yeah? I repeat, design elements, different aspects are considered as novelty. 
That's why if you look at the IRD, say, well, how, how different is it than the MyV? Four tires, two headlights, windshield, steering wheel, sama ha. It's not an innovation, but because the design element is different, it's taken into. So the industry matters as well. This goes into the doable element. That's why when your particular product or service becomes more sophisticated, you need to have the technology audit. Somebody to actually advise you. The answer is yes. That's correct, Mr. Farhan. The answer is yes, actually. In for automotive industry. For the automotive industry. So you see, that's why we need the degrees. That's why universities still matter. Because universities can provide that knowledge. Universities still matter. There are those who actually say, no, universities don't matter. I, I disagree. La. I disagree with those who think that universities don't matter. But everything is micro-certificate. Not really. And so universities have a lot to give, but it has to understand that. Again, that's a different question. Let's get back to the question here. Which one of these are innovations? So the IRIS is considered to be an innovative or an innovation because of the design element. Now, if somebody decided, so the key is novelty, even though it's a similar product. Correct, Furkan. Correct, spot on. You are, you know, pretty bright, beautiful. Yeah. Now you guys are you guys are beginning to pick it up, kan? Kata, oh, I see. So it's not just it's not just the technology; it's also related to other elements. Yeah, and we can't do it by ourselves. That's why we need to work in a team. Yeah, that's why you need to have, for example, in this case, legal team to advise you. Now, if somebody decided to reverse engineer the ideas, copy it hundred percent, even ninety nine percent, right? And then put a different brand at the top, in front, without paying Proton. That is copying. Yeah, the imitation that Mr. Robesio mentioned just now, that is imitation. And legally, you can get into trouble. Legally, you can get into trouble. That's why some ideas are to be patented. Some ideas you cannot pattern. So you have to find a different way to protect your novelty. But that is a discussion for another day. Inshallah, I believe webinar three with Puan Nur Muha and Dr. I've forgotten the name of the other speaker, but don't miss it. Eh? Sorry, Puan? Dr. Hazik. Dr. Hazik, yes. Uh. Yeah? Ah, Dr. Hazik. So, so webinar three, don't miss that session because Puan Nur Muha has been in the industry, especially intellectual property, such a long time. She can advise you. Yeah? Uh, so, we bring people who are at the forefront of this forefront kan calang-calang lah macam Puan Hanza sebut yeah? kita pun, saya pun masih, I, I'm also still learning perfectly frank so whatever I picked up insyaAllah I will share with everyone okay so now let's go to this one innovative light walk steel grating this is the normal steel grating on all platforms all platform eh? but this also is used to cover longkang our drains, this remember our drain covers steel, they, 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 like uh, they have steel cylinders, of course, with bars. Yeah, so what Dr. Tan did was to turn it from this design into this design. Whether you can see it, I, let me zoom in. You see, the design is different now. Is this an innovation or not? Yes or no? Type in the chat box or YouTube box. YouTube chat box. Yes or no? Is this an innovation? Yes or no? And everybody's a bit unsure. Okay, which one is my answer? Okay, now the answers are coming in. Yes, no, yes, no. Or oh, quiz saying yes, yes, yes. Unicell saying also yes. Oh, okay, I thought there was a quiz versus okay. <laughs> New design, yes. So many are saying yes. Some are saying, oh, okay, we understand that. I have different perspectives. It's okay. It is okay. Different perspectives are important. Oh, Afiq going, yes. Afiq, I hope you've had your breakfast and coffee. Yeah? Well, you know, let's go. Whichever cost cheaper. Ah, very interesting. Chief Arhan is talking about, hey, cost angle is also an element. And in many industries, yes, it is. Ah, which I do. Re-innovation, not quite sure what that is. We haven't defined that yet. Re-innovation. Um, okay. 
Okay, so generally, there's the general feeling that yes, this is considered a yes. Now, what exactly are the differences? The differences are this particular good rating, it uses the same material, but the design is different. But because of the design, the changes in the design, the properties of this steel rating is different. One major property, none slip. So in other words, if you wear boots, this design will actually reduce your possibility of slipping and falling, which is a big, major issue. Yeah? Imagine oil platform in the middle of the sea, sea spray, wet condition, water can get sprayed, oil can get sprayed on the surface. So you need something that has anti-slip properties. That, this change in design, it gives this particular gray thing no properties. That is the novel angle. Use the same material, yeah? Use the same material, because just to share with you, Dr. Tan tried using aluminum, which is lighter, but the problem is aluminum has certain issues on shore, or offshore. Yeah, there are certain issues. So, cannot use aluminum, go back to steel, come up with this. This is considered an innovation. Uh, so, then let us go into this one. Uh, Yang this one we don't have to talk about combat, yeah? because combat, yes, considered an innovation, patented, sold, services out there. You might be wondering, so what? It's just a shipping container. Okay, let me put things in perspective. Yeah? Our contract with Petronas, more than one million. Just one contract. Just one contract. Just using this. Yeah. So it matters commercially. It brings a lot of value to Petronas because we talk about giving services, protecting the frontliners. Protecting the frontliners is so important now. That's why we have a lot of self tests at home. Yeah. But for factories, for plants where there's a lot of security needed, this kind of setting is critical, is critical. It's not necessary, it's critical. It's not just a pain, it's like an arm being chopped off. How do we know that? We have to talk, marketable, we have to talk to people to find out, hey, this is marketable, do you need this? Now here's another example, zoom in. What do you think this is? Anybody? Okay, maybe, maybe I explain a quick, because, okay, let me, let me explain. This, it's a piece of bread. <laughs> this is a knife, but it's not just any knife. Underneath this person's thumb is the button. You press this button, it can melt butter and you can spread the butter on the bread. Uh, okay, so here's the question. Based on what you have heard from myself and Mr. Robes Yong and Fahaniza, would something like that be considered an innovation or not? Yes or no? Iron knife, something. Iron knife. Um, I don't know where this may be fired. But yes, that's correct, Bonanisa. Can use it to spread cold butter. That's that's why it was uh, designed. Now, would you consider this an innovation or not? Some say yes, some say okay, some say no. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Which is good, yeah. This different opinion is important. Some are saying yes, some say no. Okay, let me just add another element. How many of you have seen this used? Never. Oh, there you go. There you go. There. there we go. So, you haven't seen it. A lot of you have never seen it. Bear in mind, you can actually buy it on Neda. You can actually find it on certain websites. But we haven't seen it. It's a made an impact. Do you think it's marketable and bankable? Let, let me put this in perspective then. Um, the company that made this, uh, that they got Shopee. I think I've got it in Lazada. Ringgit. When I mention the price, now you tell me, you think it's bankable? Ah, there we go. So you see. The moment you apply the dumps model, then you realize, oh my, hey, wait, who's going to use this? Yep, that's right, Siti. Ah, wait, 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 hang on. Well, that's just it. The technology to make it is quite expensive. 
It looks simple, but the bankable element is the issue. The marketing element is the issue. Yes. So, not everything that's novel is bankable. Here's an example. Here's an example. I did actually ask around my friends who are in the baking industry and whatever you said, they wouldn't buy. They wouldn't. I'm sure somebody buy, bought one or two lah. I am sure. Yeah. But even overseas, it's quite expensive. In Australia, it's 20 something dollars. Makes you wonder why would I want to spend $20 for something? Yeah. So is it a pain or an itch? That's why Mr. Robbins Young reminded you earlier. Okay. So, you see, how am I doing for time? Okay, let me just quickly mention about why this matters for you, VIPs. It matters because when you want to actually innovate, you need to have these capabilities. One, you need to have high cognitive understanding of the complex process. That means whatever, com whatever field that you're in, engineering, finance, business management, ulul usul fiqh, yeah, multimedia, you need to know your stuff. Whatever you learn in university, you better know your stuff. I know some people say, hey, when you go to industry, you're going to use only 5% of what you learn in university, ma, in university, ma. But here's the point. When you want to be innovative, you which 5%? Don't know which 5%. So you better know the whole stuff you need to know. Eh? Second, challenging the status quo through creativity management. You need to be able to convince people, hey, this is very important. And finally, take accountability of your decisions. Because when you are able to do this, and you know, okay, some elements need social sciences support to make it happen, then you can go. Yeah. Okay, uh, looking at the time, I'm going to end my presentation here and hand it back to so, Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Rahmat. Oh, there's a lot of things, uh, a lot of points that have been shared by Dr. Thank you very much. Um, well, uh, some of the example was very useful because we thought that it's innovative, but when it doesn't give us ROI, it means that if we sell that at 80 ringgit, I don't want to buy that because I just wait for the butter to melt a bit, then just spread it on the on our bread. So. Uh, there are questions being, uh, there were questions was asked in the live, uh, FB live. I will share with you. Uh, I have already shared uh, in, the, in the chat personally, uh, but we will answer that question later. So there's two questions. The first question, I, I, I don't know whether Dr. Ahmad will answer that because Dr. has seen that question. And if possible, the second question, uh, Mr. Yong will answer that, but depends on which one you're more comfortable, you can discuss. Um, okay, now we move to uh, Mr. Yong uh, to present uh, the second part of that. Then we will close with answering question. Please, I'll pass this to you. All right. I think basically I will rather answer questions because of what I presented, almost already <laughs> presented. Right. So if any question, maybe I will explain. Okay. There's two questions. Madam Hanisa, uh, we cannot hear you. Right. There's two questions, sorry. Uh, first question is, how do you build truly innovative, out-of-the-box ideas? And how do you ensure that, that promising new ideas are not shot down? Means that no one reject your ideas. Okay, two and one question. There's another question. As, as world right now pursue eco value within innovation circle, how can we align the eco value and the commercial value within one product? So that's two questions here. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think the question, first, yeah. first question, mm -hmm. regardless of what, there will be different opinion to what you do. It's a fact of life, right? So it's matter of you holding on to the ideas, right? There's no such thing that, you know, sometimes we are lucky. It's okay, right? Example like my rubber stamp machine, when I created it, there was already a demand, right? Because as you know that rubber stamp those days, to make a rubber stamp is so tedious, so, you know, right? So if you look for this certain, certain ideas, which already, let's like, say, is a pain to the industry. Assalamualaikum, salam bahagia dan salam sejahtera. Selamat datang ke Stadium National Bukit Jalin untuk kita menyaksikan. Selamat datang. 
มีคนว้าวว้าวซึ่งกับว้าวแล้วจะพอตอนนั้นซึ่งไม่ได้ว้าวอยากไปเชิญชวนคุณยกสัตว์ตัวเอสแบกอยากจะไปยังที่การลุกพิธีดันจุดเดชโชว์การเสด็จอาจารย์ประตักปุ่นตัวประบุอื้อเซอื้อเซอีแอลโอเปเชียร์เบสไมซ์สปอร์เตอร์ซึ่งไอ้ก็สปอร์เตอร์ไอ้ก็สปอร์เตอร์โอเคไอไอโอเคไอไอวันไลค์ออเดียนซูพลีซ Uh, mute your microphone because we can hear the supporters here. <laughs> we can jail it, but we can take that as support to Mr. Yong. Yeah. Come on, Mr. Yong, oh. answer the question. Right. So as it is important <laughs> that you have to validate your ideas before it start. Right. You should know. You know, if you go around, if you're asking ten person, ten people, nine point nine of them say, "Oh, it's rubbish." So you must actually, you know, it's not that. Certain thing is it's not about what you think. You see, every inventors, all the idea they think the idea is the best in the world, right? And, you know, it's a fact. Right? Uh, they think, oh, if you if you tell them it's no good, they say, oh, you're trying to sabotage me. You're trying to pour cold water on me. You know, right? So it's up to the innovator themselves. They to me, life you might have to be realistic in, in what you do, right? You have to, yeah, you know, you have to believe and not not believe. You have to think. No man is the island. That's right. People, no man. It's not about what you think of yourself. You know, if you want to commercialize the thing, you need to know. You have to do some due diligence, right? You have to survey market. See what are the things that people are looking. So let's say coming back to my rubber sand machine. So when I started it, there is I know I already make a survey because this thing is also my own experience, right? I I I went to uh, I wanted to make a rubber sand. I went to the shop. The guy told me it takes me one week before I can make a chop. I said that's ridicul ridiculous. To make a simple chop take you one week. So he actually showed me the the the, the workshop where he make the rubber stamp. So I think that was a shop in Yalan Ampang or somewhere. Right? The place was so messy, so tedious. Now the guy, what they have to do in rubber stamp? They have to compose A B C. Your name is Raji. Uh, they have to pick R A H R M R and all things all this to form like a block. You know how difficult is that? And the 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 letter bit is so tiny, <laughs> right? You have to arrange that. Then they have to make a plaster mold. They have to burn the rubber in the mold. It's all tedious something, right? So for me, because I I was from the the printing industry, I actually stayed in Japan for a few years, right? I know the culture. I'll come to the part of Japan later after this, right? Right. So I saw the uh the way they make actually making printing plates. The 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 letter press plate, that is where the technology come from, right? So what the Japanese did, they actually have a machine as big as a, maybe like a your your washing machine, to to make that to to make the their printing plates. So to me, I say okay, for printing you need that precision, you need that define. For rubber stamp, you do not need, right? As long as you chop it out, you can see it does not smear. It's good enough for rubber stamp. So I develop a machine. As big as your laptop, right? Which will do the same thing, but do not have the the the, the other features as a as a machine which they are using, right? So it's something cheap. Bookstore to them, you see the the business about rubber stamp. The bookstore do not make rubber stamps. They call collect, collect the orders from the from the the, the 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 people like you and me, right? They will pass the the orders. To the rubber stamp maker, right? Then of course that is is a very tedious job. Is that is not a lot of rubber stamp maker in town, right? So that's why they need to to wait a long time. So imagine that if you can have a machine, you make rubber stamp in five minutes. That's what my rubber stamp, right? And it's so precise, as good as the printing, right? And the whole cost maybe less than the whole system with the computer, everything, anything you print out from a a, a computer on the paper, you can make into rubber stamp. I can duplicate your signature exactly, <laughs> right? Right, because it's like printing technology. Right? So if the machine, I I think less than four thousand ringgit the whole system, people will buy because one rubber stamp they will, they can actually sell for maybe of ten ringgit. One day if they make ten stamps in one month and make back the machine, right? So it's very lucrative business for them, right? right? So of course we are solving a pain for them. And also, they are making money, of course. You know, so this machine. If you come up with something on this aspect, the chances of you surviving, of you 
is, is high, right? Okay, I'll talk about uh, Japan, the culture of Japan. When I was in Japan, I learned about the culture which are much more different. Example, if a company, if a company makes table, example, if a company, that company makes table, that table, they have four screws that holds the leg, just an example, right? Four screws, like, right? They've been doing that. So one day, the, the tea lady or the sweeper come along, she saw the problem. Oh, she said, then she said, oh, okay, I have an idea. I can make this table with three screws. Oh, she, the Japanese have a system where they allowed anybody, right? To propose the ideas in the idea box. So she write in, oh, I can make this design thing. She submitted it in. So when they opened the box, they saw the idea, it's good. No, they are impressed. They actually reward that, that little lady or super whoever, right? Who are not in the technical, not in the research. Just in uh, management, right? They can even promote her to be in the management, right? For Malaysian, it's a different. You sweep the floor, you please sweep the floor. Don't go invade in other people's territory. So Malaysian, we are very territorial type of, you know, our, our system territory. We want to protect our own, you know, our, our, our chairs or table, whatever. <laughs> I tell a story. When I was a PIBG in my son's school, okay, one day the headmaster saw that a tree was leading and going to fall down between the compound of the, the school, right? So he saw that there was some uh, Bandaraya people chopping down tree. So he Ask them, well, can you please cut down the tree for because it's dangerous to the kids. Okay, when I said, okay, we cut for you. One week later, they received a letter from JKR, which the school belongs to. Why do you ask somebody else to cut the tree? This thing happened, right? <laughs> See, these are the things which is not, it's a real, it's a real thing, I, I'm not joking, right? These are a problem which will hinder our growth, right? So in Japan, it's a different. Everybody can play a part. You know the story of this one? Uh, the story about Nintendo. Nintendo, the guy who invented the game in Wash, again, the, 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 the thing, he was not, he was, I think, an accountant. He was in, not in the R&D uh, sector, right? But he is a thinker. He comes with the idea which actually saved the whole company, right? So we should have a, a chance. To, to give everybody a, a chance to, to, I know, to contribute. I think that's important, right? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, and I like the answer. I, I was, I, I, I mean, the one, the example you gave me, you gave us just now, eh? a gardener, uh, ask the Bandaraya to cut off the tree because want to take care uh, it because it's dangerous to the children. But uh, it's under JKR jurisdiction. So it's like, hey, you didn't get my my permission yeah, right. to cut it off. You want to yeah. wait for the tree to fall down and, yeah. you know, fall on the children. So yeah. uh, I think that is the problem why we cannot grow fast. I, I noticed that. Okay, that, that's a question answered by Mr. Young. Thank you. And the other question... Uh, was that was is how to be truly innovative and as world right now how can we align the eco value and the commercial value within one product is there was that a question that has not been okay. answered i think oh. as an innovator as an innovator our job is actually to produce an innovation that can marketable whether it's ecosystem that is depend on the market so if you want your product to be marketable what the people want if the people want it to be eco you have to follow them Right? It's not about, you know, actually it's not my business, right? <laughs> to be honest with you, right? So I'm talking about a uh, uh, perception from an innovator. Of course, if you want, if I want to sell the product, if the, the market wants, maybe let's say that red is the color of, of the year, right? So it's not that red is not my favorite color. I'm not into, into color. But if I want to sell, I have to follow what the markets want. Right, so it's actually it's not my business to say oh red is better than blue. It's not that. So if you are an inventor, you have to entertain what the market wants. Basically, that's all. 
Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. That's why we need to do market research because oh. we produce things according to what the market wants. Yeah. It's not because I like to produce it, I want to yeah. produce it. Yeah. So you it, you won't get uh the money back when we uh, we produce something that something that we like but not the market needs yeah, from us. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Um so we have uh we have my uh, now it's 11:05. We have about like 25 minutes. Uh, I, I would like to get each one of you to wrap up uh, and, and, and before we close the session. And if there is any more questions, please write on the chat or on the YouTube live and Cik Farhan will help me, pass me the question and I will ask the question to the panel. Uh, please, Dr. Rahman first or Mr. Young, which one? Yeah, Rahman is okay. Okay, Mr. Dr. Rahman, pass it to you. Um, how to wrap up by actually responding to some of the questions on YouTube, if, if that's okay. Because I noticed that on YouTube channel, there are some interesting questions. For example, I was asking about and that's goes back to the dumps model that your mention just now to actually understand what exactly is the pain here when it comes to the value of a particular possible product or services. Now, if you notice, there's a lot of interest in SDG, the SDGs. So we need to align whatever the with that those particular values that people with eco value, people are talking about carbon credits, people are talking about Perception, especially with the new generation, care more the environment. We have to actually admit that. You know, they'll be more than happy to go out there and say, stop buying McDonald's. Why? Because the way they actually have supply or get their beef supply. The new generation are willing to do that. That's one thing I do this year. So to them, eco value is becoming that becomes a pain. Hence, there is a market for your businesses. Uh, Dr. Justina asked about how do you truly innovative, out-of-the-box ideas. And I think Rodas John touched on this. But when Dr. Juice asks about how do you ensure that promising new ideas are not shot down? This is where idea championing becomes very important. Idea championing is critical. And we will tackle this in, if I'm not mistaken, the, I think the fourth webinar, when we talk about what exactly is idea championing and what we need to do to make sure that your ideas don't get shot down. Not very easy, not very easy. And we understand that, uh, especially in universities, for your information, I'm an industry advisory panel of 10 universities, and we see this happen across the board, both social as well as technical divisions or rather faculties. Same issue that we see. So it's not just the social sciences people that get their ideas shot down. No, technical people get their ideas shot down as well. Uh, there are reasons behind it and we will tackle that in that particular webinar but the short response is understanding the what's known as investment appetite we'll unpack that in that particular webinar uh, there was a question from tuan mat just mat why do innovation sometimes only stop with the ideas that are not truly apply in our country oh. <laughs> I think Tuan Yong also has seen, Tuan Yong has also seen this. Part of the issue is because if you, when you have a novel idea, win medals, for example, it's great for an organization. Yeah, it's good for marketing, it's good for branding and what have you. But if you start saying, oh, okay, this is not innovation yet. This particular idea have not graduated. For example, we don't call graduates graduates until they graduate. So same thing with this particular idea. Okay, here's an idea. It's one medals and whatever you. Uh, this is an innovation. But no, it hasn't gotten to the market. Nobody used this. Shh. Keep your eyes. That's part of the reason. Don't mind eh? Assuming that's what mind. Eh? Yeah, part of the issue. Part of the issue. And we'll unpack this. And I find not mistaken, the, either the fifth or the sixth webinar talking about why do novel ideas sometimes stop? Again, we don't call novel ideas innovations yet, just like Tony Yong mentioned just now. So these are the issues that we're grappling with. And these issues will be tackled if one, we adopt the proper definition of innovation. And we look at the criteria 
that have been highlighted. So bear that in mind. Again, if you have any questions, if you are not sure or if you disagree with some of the perspectives, it's okay. This is that's part of what's known as creative friction. That's critical in idea generation of innovations. Yeah, creative friction is very, very essential. That's why if you have everybody agreeing with your idea and nobody saying, hey, that's not quite right. Nobody's actually critiquing the idea. Critique, yeah? not critical, but critique. Nobody's given a critique of that idea. That is a bad sign. So it means that idea that you have, maybe just another warmed up idea. It's just another happy. Allah, just the same with everybody else's. Not really a novel perspective. So I think with that, um, in essence, definition of innovation, getting it right is a very important role in ensuring that it adds value to end users, to the team, to government, and to the society as a well. whole. Thank you. Back to you, Pat. Thank you very much, Dr. Hamad. Very good and very interesting. Okay, um, we I would like to invite Mr. Robert Yang. Yeah, okay. Um, to conclude the whole thing about innovation, uh, this Mr. Young? Yeah, I think Dr. Rahmat mentioned that, uh, somebody mentioned what's the definition, what, what they mean by thing without a box, <laughs> right? Okay, you can see from my list of in in invention, innovation, the, what I say, the, the principle or, 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 or it comes from different fields. That could be mechanical, that could be, you know, chemistry, that could be, you know, biology, that thing. You know, this is what it means like thing without a box. Most of the, let's say, universities, especially PhDs, right, they have their own discipline. Right? If they are into biology, they will only focus on, on, on that line. They will not think or use another discipline or mechanical to put into what they're doing, right? So if sometimes an innovation, you need to have different discipline to, uh, to merge, to make into a product. Example, if the person makes table, he will only concentrate maybe on tables and chairs or what's around me. They will never think of something like you make uh, a car or, or something, you know, it's, it's, it's a different field, they will not, right? But if you think without the box, it doesn't matter. Right? As long as it's something like say it fits the Dharma's approach. It's an innovation. Right? This is, you know, we, we now you see we, the whole world is so wide and so diversified. We need different approach. We cannot say, oh, I only specialize on, on, on this. It, you know, it won't work. Right? So on the conclusion, I think what we need to do, what, what innovators for them to do, we need to be realistic, right? We need to know what people want and do not get carried away by your, by your, your ideas, I think. Don't take it too personal, <laughs> right? Don't think that, oh, just because you got an idea, especially when those people who get a, a patent granted, they think the whole world owes them a living. That is a problem, right? Oh, my idea is the best. I don't to have people to kill out to, 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 to worship me. You know, it, it doesn't work that way. I don't like your face. I don't buy from you. It's still, <laughs> that's a reality, right? So that sometimes you see that some ideas are so good. Why it does it is not, well, it's not popular. It's, it's the same. Like this shop sell me goreng. It tastes better than the, the shop next door. But that shop next door have better sales. You can't, can, you can say, oh, mine is better. Why are you not buying from me? Right? Then a lot of inventors or innovators, you know, to them is that, to them, their perception of most of them, what they want is like uh, grant. You know? They look for a grant rather than, right? So I've, I've asked, I've seen some innovators coming to me and say, oh, I got these great ideas, right? You're going to show to make money. I say, okay, why, why don't you do it? Oh, because I'm waiting for a grant. If a grant I do, no grant I won't do. I say, even if you got a grant, you won't be successful. You are a grant entrepreneur, you're not an entrepreneur. <laughs> right? So the word grant entrepreneur to them is that, you know, I say, if, if you, your idea is so good, so, so profiting at the end of the day, you're so confident. I think for me, I will pajak my sarong also, I, I, I will invest in that. 
right? I got you got a car, got a house, you mortgage it since you're so sure. If you're not willing to do yourself, what makes you think that investor is going to do for you, right? So you see, for you to, before you approach an investor or apply for granting, money must be your last problem. You settle everything else. You got a technology, you got know-how, you got license, you got everything except money. Then you approach them. The challenges of you, you won't be wasting your time. Don't, don't stop digging. Be realistic. Can't hear you, Haliza. Actually, I I lost you for a while. Okay, I I'm you are here now. I'm here. Okay. Uh, is that all, Mister Young? Thank you yes, very much. Yes. Okay, I pick up certain things like what do we need to do? It has to be realistic. Uh, what people want, and we cannot be carried away with what we like, and we invent invent something that we like, but not for the the other people. So some ideas are good. Uh, but still, if we feel that our ideas is good, we need to get some uh, feedback from the criticals. I mean, cri we need to get critics or we need to get feedback from other people because things that we think is good for us uh, would not go far. We need to get some comment about the product that we're going to produce. And I like the word grant grantopreneurs. <laughs> yeah, I just want to share something with you all. I have a friend. Uh, she's a teacher. Uh, she's my. She was my senior at, in college, in university, uh, back in Illinois. But uh, she came back. She become teacher. She becomes so involved in her job, and she wants to. You know, like uh, as a Muslim, we believe what we share with people, knowledge, we bring back to the uh, uh, the 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 akhirah and something like that. So she gave back. She is giving back by um, she is a teacher, online teacher now, helping others, especially the B forty below people, uh, rakyat Malaysia, uh, to teach them on economics. And she joined the academy YouTuber. And they, they, okay, this is a good link for you. Uh, it came to my mind just now. Uh, they had come up with uh, one idea. I think they had tried, they had started doing that. But as you said, we, they don't have fun. They uh, want to make it as an application that everybody can use on, 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 on uh, mobile, mobile as a mobile apps. Uh, I don't know further about that because I've not read their proposal. So, so it's like this group of teachers they are preparing themselves uh, to, to go forward for the future um, pendidikan or education in Malaysia. And it happened not because uh, only the COVID, and they are being forced to change the way they teach students. So, so their programs, you can browse the, the YouTube, Academy YouTuber is very, fa very famous among the the student at the Plaza in Malaysia. So I'm trying to link her, her with my other friend, trying to get, as you said just now, grant because they don't have grant because they are NGOs. So before uh, we close this session, uh, I would like to thank so much to both of you. It is very interesting. I would like to invite all the guests today to follow us, follow through until we finish the whole session, which is session six. Uh, each week we have interesting topic and it all, it's all about uh, innovation and related to innovation such as intellectual property, innovation value chain. And also at the end of that, we will have uh, to create, uh, to integrate the different phases of the IVC. So I would like, um, I'm looking forward. Inshallah, I'll be joining. Um, I may use my YouTube live so I can move around during the weekend. And I would like to pass to our um, technical person, the person who's in charge of the today's event, uh, Encik Farhan. Thank you, Dr. Ahmad Shazi. Thank you, Mr. Robert Young. And thank you, Madam Han. It's a very fruitful session. And uh, it is grateful that the session is just for two hours only. 
but I believe the student have received a, a lot of information and ideas on how to on how does this Bernas project is going to be and how long does it going to run for. And then uh, I would like to say thank you from the UNICEL uh, University, Madam Rohaiza, uh, Madam Siti Marhama, as well as the representative from the SUK Selangor that came and joined during this session. Uh, and then as well as thank you for the students from UNICEL and QUIZ as well uh, for the particip participation uh, for this session. And this is just a starting point. And we do have, as stated from Madam Haniza, we do have a session that is going to long for three months and then divided into three uh, different programs, three different major programs. And then uh, for the whole December, it's just a program one only. And program one, we have six sessions. So I do hope that uh, all students and participation uh, participate uh, going to commit for this uh, session as uh, it is a very fruitful session and it is um, participated and being teached by the people that is actively uh, working for industry and actively produce something that we can call as stated by Dr. Ramat Shazi, a real innovation, not a real innovacy. Okay, so thank you everyone, and then Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, and salam sejahtera.